What's up, you two? Special Tuesday night edition, November the 6th. Real quick, I'm going to turn this over to Katie. Give everybody a little heads up as what's going on. Katie from Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance. You've seen her on the show before. Uh, she reached out to me and she said, listen, I want to put together a roundtable and we talk about the conditions, issues, things that have occurred this season. Let's get a group of professionals together. Let's all talk about it. So I'm going to let her take over from here. Katie, how are you, ma'am? Doing all right. How's everybody else doing? I appreciate you helping me get this together, Matt. I think it's going to be something that's really beneficial to a lot of people, not just lawn care providers, but people who own lawns themselves and are just wondering what has happened this year. Pretty much across the board, I can't think of a single state on this half of the country that hasn't had some sort of record-breaking weather at different points of this year. It's been absolutely insane between heavy rainfall, high humidity, high temperatures, unseasonably hot beginnings to fall, and aeration and seeding seasons. We in our Virginia area have seen a really, really high rate of fungus like brown patch and in this fall, gray leaf spot, which we normally only see every five years. So we've seen a lot of yards that have been decimated basically by unexpected fungus, high grub populations, issues like that, when normally we would only see maybe 10% actually develop it at all, let alone have serious problems. When we saw so many of our clients having this issue and had to have so many hard conversations about it's not it's not really us, it's not you, it's not anything anybody's doing wrong, it's just terrible weather. That's not something that somebody who's investing hundreds or thousands of dollars a year in the maintenance of their lawn really wants to hear. And that's understandable. It's a big investment. It's your yard. You have to look at it every day. So for Mother Nature to come in and just say, nope, not this year, that sucks. So we know it's not just us. Most of our clients know that too. We just want to give them more information and have them see for themselves that it's lawn care providers across the country that are having the issue too which is why we got this awesome group together. And so I'm gonna give it back to Matt to kind of tell us who everybody is and what they're bringing to the table today. Yeah, all right, so just real quick, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run down the list here and if everybody could just tell me who you are, uh, the name of your company and your geographical location. Uh, we'll just kind of blow through this and give everybody a, a who's who. Uh, Cheryl, we're gonna, we're gonna start with you. Hi, I'm Cheryl McLaurin. I'm the operations manager and agronomist on staff for Eco Lawn Care in Austin, Texas, and we service most of the North Austin and Northern suburbs here in Central Texas. All right. Uh, who is this guy with the GCI turf hat on? Hey, it's Pete. What's up? What's happening, Pete? I'm good, man. I'm Pete, GCI turf over here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I do yard stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Patrick, who are you? Where'd you come from? Yeah, so Patrick Valancourt, uh, owner operator, Northern Turf Management. Uh, and I'm way up north, uh, northern Maine. Um, cover pretty much the whole state in a roundabout way, but mostly northern and eastern Maine, if you will. Fantastic. Then we got over here, John Pajak. Oh, geez. Hey, how you guys doing, John Pajak? Turf Tamer Lawn Care. I'm in Sherville, Indiana, which is Great Lakes region, I'm right by Chicago. So we're right there in the Great Lakes area. And last but not least, we got Mr. Ward. Tell us about yourself. What's up, folks? Tyler Ward here, uh, Outdoor Concepts Turf Management. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm about four hours from Matt and two hours from Pete. So a lot of what we talk about tonight is probably going to be pretty much the same weather-wise. All right. So uh, those of you know, obviously, this is the, the grass factor. Typically, I open this up to the uh, community to ask questions. We'll get to that point. Um, but again, we're doing this special and, uh, you know, we're going to keep it in this this roundtable format. So, uh, Katie, I'm going to turn it back to you. Don't forget to let uh, Brandon uh, introduce himself, too, because he's a good buddy. Um, but if we can kind of just run down the same line and everybody give a quick season summary, uh, talk about the successes, the failures you had, how that pertained to 
uh, weather, and anything else you feel like uh, is involved there. I'll go first. So we had a really weirdly compressed season here in Texas. We had a late start to our pre-emergence and then it was wet in the spring and then we had almost no real precipitation July and June and most of August. And then we had the wettest September and October. I mean, aside from Harvey, it was just horrible rain. I mean, I think my guys had a total of four days on one paycheck and it was just nobody was happy nobody could get any work done the grass got two feet tall so and now it's just humid and 80 degrees during the day and 60 degrees at night which is great to sit outside in but when you're trying to do disease control it's not ideal so that's where we're at now what, what kind of feedback are you getting from your customers through the dry period and now how is that transition that you're into a wet period? So we just, we weren't able to get really good weed control when it was 105 every day for almost six weeks. Cause just about anything you put out, that's going to hit the weeds, it's going to hit the grass, the grass slowed way down. And then as soon as we got a little bit of rain, we got a great flush of growth. And then two weeks later, fungus and everything looked terrible, even though it had looked good to begin with. It just could not hang on. We had a lot of winter kit. We also had a really cold winter last winter for about two weeks, and it was just enough to get our Bermuda grass to get some winter kill on the roots. So we had a patchy start to the year. It just wasn't fun. At no. all. So starting with winter kill, then you move into intense heat and dry weather. So obviously that's going to put a hamper on yeah. any recovery that's taking place from your winter kill, not helping. Then you move into extremely wet period. That's uh, that yeah. makes for a brutal season. And mind you, this is on the automatic grass, Bermuda grass, right? Yeah. And the, the best part is, so we're also on extremely shallow soils. I am lucky to get six inches of diggable dirt before we start hitting rock. And then most of my clients are on drought restrictions if it's not actively raining. So you can you can maybe water one day a week, depending on your HOA, depending on your city, and depending on whether, if you're out of the city, if you have enough water in your well. Mm. So, That's brutal. It's, it's a lot of variables to take into account. Yeah. So that's the Texas perspective. Um, Katie, why don't you give us the uh, what happened over on, on coastal Virginia side? So Virginia's kind of had actually a similar experience to what Cheryl was describing in terms of spring hit hard with crazy unexpected rains that didn't stop. Between May and June, both of those individually were the wettest months on record for almost 150 years of record keeping. I think between the two of them, we had about 24 inches of rain and we had probably a normal 20 days of rainfall, which is about average, but each of those days was an inch or more pretty much, which is just literally when it rained, it poured at that point. And so every single yard got oversaturated. We saw a huge boom of brown patch. We normally maybe see 10 to 20% of lawns develop some sort of fungus each season. And this year we saw at least 80% develop very significant and debilitating brown patch. Um, we saw a heavy dollar spot and just kind of an assortment of every kind of issue from rot down at the base to just oversaturation in general. Then this season, once we kind of got into the late summer, July, August, it tempered out a little bit and the fescue um, that we were, because we were coming out of the fescue, the fescue that we were treating with fungicide, it, it started to improve because we've gotten multiple applications down. So when we got to aeration seed time, we wrongly thought we were going to have a little bit of a break and then all of a sudden it was the third hottest september on record we got hurricanes um coming through pretty much every two or three weeks so there was never really a good seeding period where we could put it down without risk of the seed being flooded away and then we ended up getting late season fungus more brown patch gray leaf spot at that point and we saw a good number of yards not too many but substantial numbers that ended up losing huge portions of their baby grass to fungus, which was really, really killer. It's just kind of not been a non-stop bad season in general. Yeah, you know, that was, uh, 
at least what I noticed, you know, we didn't get anywhere near the rain that you did. But I mean, even from the get go of this year in Knoxville, you know, we hit almost 90 degrees. We got to 89 degrees in February. Um, and then we had much, much colder March than we had in February and January. And then in April, it immediately kicked into summer. So uh, there was not a, a transition into a full fledged growing season. It was growing season and then back to almost dormancy and then growing season again. And, you know, that that's never good from an agronomy perspective. You know, what, what do you do? Nobody knows what to do. The plants don't know what to do. Um, all right. So that kind of gives coastal Virginia. We've got Texas. Patrick, tell us a little bit about what happened in Maine. So I'm going to kind of back up to the end of last season, if you will, because I think it, it has a bearing on it. Um, you know, last late last summer, we had a real dry stretch. Um, so stuff was going, you know, into late fall, early winter, already moisture stressed, if you will. And then we went right into some super cold temps, even for us um, in, you know, early December without much snow yet. Um, and we were talking like 20, 30 below consistently um, real early. Um, and then, you know, going into this, going through the rest of the winter, we had some real warm ups, you know, a lot of freeze thaw, um, which didn't help. And so all that stress, and then we come into spring and we started out cool and dry, um, which was odd for a main spring. Um, so we're having issues with, you know, it's cool, it's dry stuff isn't even releasing in, in terms of fertilizer. Um, and then we went right from that into still being dry, but as soon as we hit late June, uh, into July, you know, we're hitting high eighties all the time, which is again, not normal for us until late July, early August. Um, and we just kept rolling with the hot, dry weather, humidity kicked in a lot earlier, like mid July. Um, and then right through, you know, we had a couple shots, of a decent rain here come mid August, but it stayed, you know, abnormally dry um, right through pretty much now. We're still on the map as abnormally dry. Um, you know, so for us, people aren't used to that. Um, you know, up here, drought and, and heat has never really been an issue since I've been around doing this. So people just aren't used to these extreme conditions in terms of lawn care and Combine that with the fact that real professional lawn care up in this area is, it's not that it's uh, uncommon, but people just aren't used to it on a wide scale as you get more into some of these more urban areas. Uh, it's super rural up here. So, you know, you combine all that with problems that people have never seen in extreme weather. It's, it's quite the uh, tornado, if you will. Yeah, I would say, you know, it's almost one of those things where like, you know, you have uh, a, a period where, no one has ever really experienced something. So they're all experiencing, you know, symptoms of drought and stress at the same time. And then in the same vein, you also run into the same kind of uh, storm, if you will, when you have two or three years of it in, in a row, you know, so the customers uh, are so accustomed to hearing it that they want to hear something different. And uh, so, you know, you're, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place in either situation. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, what happened to you over in Charlotte? Uh, pretty much uh, I'll, you know, pick up where you uh, left off, Matt. We had that warm February. Uh, March was a little cooler than expected. April, we kind of had some sort of a spring. And then May 1st, bam, we went 90 degrees May 1st. Um, humidity through the roof. Uh, and we stayed that way all the way through the first week of October. Um, for me, I run a four program or a four fungicide app program, and it was hard to keep the brown patch at bay this year with the, the length of the heat and the humidity and the rain it just kept coming. Um, and this fall, like Katie was talking about earlier, you know, we, we went into aerating and seed mode and we were still 85 plus a week of 90 the first week of October two hurricanes in two weeks. Um, I mean, just problem after problem, no spring, no fall, a lot of heat. I think for the Charlotte Metro area, this was the eighth hottest year on record and September was the second hottest September on record for us. That, yeah. And I think that's going to be real similar to Pete. What'd you experience?
had to unmute it. Pretty much the same thing, just like he's saying. I don't, I don't keep up with the temperatures. I know that the weather wasn't typical. We didn't really have a spring. Uh, summer was quick and hot, and we got we got pretty good rain for a little while, and then all of a sudden it gets real hot and dry, and then we start getting rain again. But all our trouble was in the fall. The the seeding. I've been doing this fifteen years, and by far this was the absolute worst year I've ever had for aeration and seeding. It was just way too much water. I, I, I need to look it up and see what the numbers was, but I I would guess it was about 30 inches of rain in in uh, September, October time frame, right when we're seeding. I mean when you got when you got rivers coming up over top of the road, and you got my mom's uh, creek that runs under her driveway is gushing water over top of the road and washing the road out. That's just, that's too much rain at one time. And and you've always heard me say it, and I'll always say it, that everything that happens in a yard is weather dictated. And I'll, I'll stand by that until I quit doing this. You know, I think it's, it's interesting because Obviously, this is a panel of all professional applicators and having a, a relationship with, with all of you in some form or fashion, you know, I know that the level of output that comes from everybody on this panel is extremely high. But one thing that we always have to take into account is that this is a battle against nature and nature will always find a way to come out on top. So really, we put our... <laughs> forward um but you know sometimes you come out ahead sometimes you come up short so it's a uh it's a pretty pretty tough spot i think we're all between a rock and a, and a hard place when we have years like this year so we're going to move on to the last part of this um and we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of bring all this together so this was the season we had and the events that led to the situation we're in now where do we go from this point forward? So, uh, Cheryl, let's start back with you. Well, um, for us, there's going to be, we're going to be looking at changing around some of our applications and timing. One of the issues we had this year was we kept having, it would be way too hot. And then the minute we get a break in the heat, it would start to rain. And so we were having really compressed timelines on all of our applications. We were missing timing um, by trying to do things the right way. So we're going to try to look at some more flexible um, application methods and some, some pro probably uh, try to do a couple more value added products. Um, I'm actually going to be talking into a lot of our problem properties this winter about trying to add some winter um, remediation of soils. Cause a lot of our soils are at a eight to an eight and a half pH, which is just take all patch heaven, especially when we don't have a very deep soil profile. So that water doesn't, it's not able to infiltrate. So when it does rain, it just sits right there in the thatch and in those shallow roots. So we're going to try to do some, um, some acidification over the winter, see if we can, the clays are way too high to do any real pH changing, but we can maybe tick down that very surface level just a little bit to where we can get it better into that sweet spot. And then just a lot of customer education on, you know, if there's any humidity, try not to water at all. Um, what these things look like at the very first sign so we can get out there before it explodes with the intermittent showers we're supposed to be having every other hour for the next four days kind of thing. So it's just, it's, it's always going to be a moving target. We had the year to date, we're about, I want to say four to five inches over our water year, but for the last inch, inches of rain over our typical water year, but in the last 90 days, we're 15 inches over. So we got all of that right then. And it's just, wow everybody's got to be flexible. And sometimes you got to think and just be like, there's, you just got to throw up your hands and say, I have done everything I can. And let's try to get this into a better preparation to, 
to be able to move with these these issues we know we're going to face in central texas i mean i i'm from mississippi and i have never seen so much fungus as i've seen in central texas just because of the soil and how much water you get at one time it's either drought or flood there's no in between and that's just how it is so we're just going to try to do a better job of getting in a good spot before these these stress come so. sure katie What's the game plan up there in Virginia? What what have you and Brandon and Jimmy concocted? I know I know y'all are always cooking in the kitchen. So we're we're trying to play it at two different angles in terms of that. We're we're doing a lot of client education right now, which is a big purpose of this video, but we're also starting to reach out to them to think ahead to next year. And that's something that Brandon, who's the head of our effort division, has been working on is trying to push for fungicide applications and grub control applications next year preventatively instead of just trying to treat it as it comes up. Do you want to talk about that more? It's just something that in the past we haven't really seen a whole lot of need to treat for fungus. We, like she said earlier, we see it in maybe five to 10% of our lawns up until this year. And then this year we maybe had five to 10% of our lawns that didn't get it. So moving forward in the next year, we're going to try to push more on and getting people to let us do more preventative so that we're not trying to then like chase our tail to try to fix it halfway through the season when they've already lost. You know, they, they, they call us because they're seeing brown spots. By the time I get out there, look at it, say this is what it is, this is what it's going to cost. They say go ahead and treat it. By then, they've lost a good portion of the lawn. So in an effort to try to not let that happen, we're going to try to push a lot more preventative this year and just – see if we can stay ahead of it as best as we can. Sure. Hey, Jack. Yo. What you got playing, man? Well, if we have another year that was like this year, it's it really is going to have to be all about the timing. Uh, this year with our spring that we had, we didn't have one. It was We still had snow on the ground, pushed our applications way back, and it not only – did it get hot really quick uh, and stay there and then drought and then rain? So it's kind of similar to everybody else's story. But this year, uh, in the future, we're going to have to figure out doing better split applications with our crabgrass. That was one of the big things that threw us back this year. And then on top of that, um, the you know, incorporating uh, a fungicide program, uh, if, you know, we could – forecast that we're going to have like wet seasons like we had this year it's going to have to become part of the program and uh communication is going to have to be key with our clients because that's that uh, you know the uh dollar spot brown patch was the biggest uh, complaint that we had this year people that never had it before all of a sudden it was just popping up everywhere so that's one of the things we're looking into other you know always looking at different products to be able to put down like using, you know, bettering our cultural pro pro our cultural practices. And then, um, like I said, incorporating uh, more preventative measures so that things like that would never hit us too hard before are not going to get incorporated into our programs so that these sh shouldn't be issues moving forward. John, what does it look like in Indiana, say, like over the last three years in terms of weather extremes? <laughs> if you don't like the weather in Indiana, just wait a few minutes. It'll change. I, I'm not kidding you. Um, this the past three years, if you're going to go back three years, they have had the wildest swings um, like this. This March we had we still had snow on the ground uh, all the way up until the first week of April. We didn't. We weren't able to put down applications until you know mid-April, and then all of a sudden the heat came in, and it went from you know 35, 40 degrees all the way up to like 89 in April, and then it just did this roller coaster. And our our climate, you, I mean, you could kind of. I'm not saying that it's really predictable. But, you know, there's the, the, the regular ebbs and flows that you would normally have. But the past few years, they have been so extreme, like, you know, to where you would think August, traditionally August was always like the hot month. 
the dry month, that's when you would traditionally see lawns kind of going dormant just a bit. They may not, but um, the, the, a couple of years ago, September was that month. We got a complete drought in September and you couldn't really do any aeration overseeding because it was like that month got pushed over. Um, and, it, you know, just for instances like that, you know, throughout the season this year, it's been so challenging because you'll have super duper wet months where it's raining and it's, un, it, you know, in July, we had a super wet July. Tons of fungus popped out. It's like, what the, this is supposed to be the summer month when everything's great. We only get a few months where it's actually nice around here. You know, we're from, we're, I could look at Chicago and, you know, we always complain about everything, <laughs> especially the weather. But um, it just this past, the past year specifically has been so challenging because we have, you know, we think we know what to expect with the weather and there is, we can't expect anything anymore. It just, it just, yeah, you wake up, you look out the window and it's like, yeah, I can do something today. Oh, no, I'm not, I can't do anything today. It's like nine, it's 95 degrees in September. What am I going to do? You know? Yeah. So. Uh, Patrick, where do you see things moving ahead for you up in near Canada? So I think what I'm planning, um, definitely, you know, I do the end of the year letter, Christmas letter, whatever. Usually it's just, Hey, you know, great year. Thanks for business. I think this year there's going to be a little addition to that base, basically saying, Hey, look, we're going to start, you know, this is what we saw for issues this year and kind of do a little spiel on the extreme weather past couple of years, how it's kind of a progression of things are getting, you know, harder to deal with uh, in terms of drought and insects and things they've never seen before. Uh, you know, this year, for example, I saw a lot more grub issues, which I was expecting. A lot more chinch bugs, um, which I was kind of expecting. And then, you know, problems that people may have had before, but because the weather was kind of average, if you will, they didn't know they had, you know, thatch, big time thatch issues I'm finding a lot of this year. Just because because it was so hot and dry, you know, those areas, you know, kind of dried up uh, quicker than they would have before. Um, so people say, oh, geez, I never had that before. Well, this is record breaking weather and these, you know, excessive thatch areas that you had, it wouldn't have shown up or you wouldn't have noticed it as much. So, you know, just trying to get people to, to see, you know, what's out there. Um, and like some of the other folks are saying, you know, definitely preventative on some of this stuff, grubs, especially, um, you know, disease up here. I mean, it's here and there, but I just... I don't think we have the extreme uh, hot and humid that uh, folks for the South do. I mean, we are on the Canadian border after all. So, you know, we're just not going to see some of these extremes ever. Um, but, you know, definitely with the insect stuff, uh, more preventative and, you know, more education on, hey, look, you know, these are the problems we're having. They're here. They're not going anywhere. Um, another thing for me that's probably different from a lot of you guys is no one up here has irrigation. It, it is not a thing. Um, so, you know, these hot and dry periods that again the reason people don't have irrigation is because it's never really been an issue since i've been around anyway um you know people say well what can we do well you don't have irrigation so not a whole lot um and i think that's an opportunity for me to you know do more of these biostimulants um wetting agents something i'll be pushing more come spring um you know try and maximize the moisture that we do get you know anything like that um you know, I think is going to be good to at least make people aware of that can be done. Um, you know, because a lot of those things, again, in my market, people just aren't aware of these kind of, I call them specialty type, you know, applications. Um, so I think it's, I don't like that I have to do that. But again, it's a good sales opportunity. So I think that's kind of the direction I'm going to go in. Sure. Tyler, what are you going to do over in Charlotte, man? It's brutal over there. Uh, yeah, ta it's funny hearing everybody talking about the, the brown patch, things like that. For, for me, it's not which yard's going to get it. Uh, they all get it in Charlotte. Uh, it's a matter of when. And Pete and I talk a lot in the spring. You know, I'm three or four years ago, I moved to a preventative fungicide program. Uh, my first app goes out the 1st of May, depending on the weather, where it's at. Um, I use the golf course rule of, uh, of, of, of fungus, basically take the temperature and the humidity and add them together. If, they re if they're at 150 or above, you need to be spraying. 
So when I get about 130, 135, I start ramping up. First of May, my first app goes out. Um, I also provide uh, grub control with that first app, and I've I've seen that it, it works. The problem is it's sometimes so hot and humid and there's so much rain, it's hard to get that 24, 28 days out of that app. Uh, so you end up chasing it a little bit, but for the most part, it works. Um, biggest thing I'm gonna change up next year is I need to figure out something. I wanna go out with a preventative for army worms. Army worms have become a huge issue for me. Um, and I don't wanna go chase them in September because I'm just like you guys, I'm ramping up for air rating season. I'm starting air rating season, weather permitting. Um, it's something that I'd rather do a preventative app for, uh, maybe in fungicide app number three or four or whatever, and and not have to worry about it. Uh, other than that, you know, hopefully the weather next year in 2019 will just be a little bit easier on us. Um, no more five, six months of summer. <laughs> that Wouldn't that be sweet? Pete, yeah. <laughs> take it off mute. And let's hear what your game plan for next year, because I know you, you're cooking too. I'm not changing the dang thing. Um, oh, foot. But what I am going to do, is, and you guys can do this if you want, I, I'm in the middle of creating a – it's about 16 pages. It's a document I'm going to send out to all my customers, and it's going to detail out every month of the year what could possibly – wrong if that happens what to expect i'm gonna do the entire thing and i'm gonna let them know what's going on before it happens that that's what i'm gonna do i love it i love I, it I, I love that too but you know what my clients do with that they get it and they go that's like some bait thing what did you, oh oh geez, <laughs> right in the trash hey, that's, that's what i'm gonna do that's a good idea, though. I like it. I'm going to up the education and let them know up front. And and I'm glad you mentioned army worms. Um, we don't have that around here. That's typically <laughs> east of us, right? Okay. And they typically don't bother tall fescue either. And I'm going to throw this out there. A lot of there's a reason y'all ain't seen my yard on videos lately. My good <laughs> years I am about my yard. Who keeps switching the screen? Oh, that was my fault. I changed <laughs> it. Years I am about my yard. Dude, my yard got decimated, destroyed by army worms. And oh, they're brutal. I didn't know what it was because we've never had them here. <laughs> I had no clue. It was the first time. So I called my buddies at NC State. Heck, I called Matt. Matt said they don't mess with fescue. I said, but they ain't messing with this fescue. I took a shovel <laughs> full of dirt, and in one big scoop of dirt, I bet it was 30 army worms. Oh, yeah. In one shovel full. So I called <laughs> NC State. I said, uh, I got a buddy there. I said, man, what the heck? Where, where do these things come from? And they swear up and down that the hurricane, the the the, uh, the second hurricane that come from the east coast, come up that way, brought them in and dumped them right into Piedmont, Charlotte, right wow. in the middle of North Carolina. Because he said they got hundreds and hundreds of phone calls. Why is my yard just dying? In two days, to, to, to 24, 48 hours, the entire lush, thick turf, Poof, gone. It it probably killed seventy percent of my yard. Wow. And I was incredibly nervous because a lot of people see that on YouTube, and I was <laughs> incredibly nervous. I mean, to the point where I was extremely stressed out. But look on Instagram; she's back in order now. She's looking really. Good. <laughs> you know, I just real quick. I, I'm just going to kind of. Uh, try and, and sum this up. What What's interesting is, is you know, I ask everybody for next year, and it seems like everyone, you know, has, has kind of like this this dual part here where, you know, increase educational efforts to the customer and also the evolution of your program. And, you know, I feel like as an applicator, you know, you're, you're always forever a student. And I know 
Pete makes a joke. He says he's not going to change anything, but uh, he and I talk. I know, I know things are always changing with Pete. They change minute by minute, day by day. So uh, he can't, he can't act like that's not the case, but right. even more so, that makes me so proud to see that here, you know, we have this many applicators and this many people are willing to make changes, step outside of their comfort zone, adapt, evolve their programs. And I think that says a lot to the state of the industry because, you know, this is, you know, we're looking at a panel of the next generation of the industry. So uh, that's a really positive thing. And I, I think uh, just me wanting to say thank you to all of y'all for, uh, your dedication to the improvement of the trade and uh, in the improvement of uh, uh, applicators. Um, all right, Katie, why don't you go ahead and tie this up? Well, I appreciate everybody taking the time to participate in talking this and everybody who's been talking. Um, stay posted on everybody that's been involved in this take a look at the links that are provided in terms of our company websites as well as our own we've got a really active youtube channel that's done for picture perfect lawn maintenance which is the company that brandon and i work with um if you have questions obviously hit somebody on this panel up we've got a really good spread from texas to virginia to maine across the board so of everybody who's watching there's bound to be somebody on this panel who's in your area or close to it who can give you some feedback give you some advice and possibly help you out with your lawn. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, Katie has YouTube channel, Picture Perfect Lawn Maintenance. You can look them up. Cheryl, are you on the YouTube? I am not. I I spend enough time on the computer. That's fine. But where can people? <laughs> I like to be outside. It won't make me stand in front of a computer any more than I have to. <laughs> if someone's looking to get a hold of you, where's the best place they can get a hold of you? Uh, it's either going to be at ecolawncare.com um, there or at our Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash ecolawncareATX. All right, Pete, uh, everybody knows where to get a hold of you. That'd be on the YouTube at GCI Turf or <laughs> Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> Instagram, YouTube, we're all over the place right now, man. That's right. He's everywhere. He's an everywhere man. Patrick, where do they get a hold of you? Uh, best place is Facebook. Uh, so Facebook backslash uh, Northern Turf Management. Pretty straightforward. All right. John, Patrick, where do they get a hold of you? Uh, let's see. There's a, most of the Facebook groups that know me. You can find me in any of the Facebook groups. Facebook, TurfTamerLawnCare.com, and Instagram. We're working on building the new page for that, too. So. We're trying to diversify, help That's everybody right. out. And for those of you that don't know, John Pajak was one of the winners of the Carbon X giveaways at the GIE. So I will be making a trip up there to hang out with him, and we'll be doing some all kinds of fun content up there. Tyler, how do the people get a hold of you, sir? Uh, the YouTube, I have a YouTube page, but I'm not as good at the videos as Pete is. Uh, so Instagram and Facebook, uh, Outdoor Concepts, Turf Management, uh, all the info's there, and uh, that's where you can find it. All right, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you to the panel. This was awesome, and uh, I hope we can do it again. Everybody have a good evening. Don't take Thank care. you, Matt. Thanks. Bye, Katie. That was cool. Bye.